All right, guys, welcome back to Talks with Maria. Today, we're going to talk with Jazz Gill, a transformation coach and speaker. Today, she's going to share with us her journey of being a banker turned life coach. Jazz, how are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? Thank you so much for this opportunity to be on your show. Thank you. We're excited to have you and really dig deep into um, how you become a life coach and all of the things that you can share with us in this journey. So let's jump right in. What made you get into being a life coach? Mm -hmm. Well, life did get me to get into life coaching. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I started, well, I'm, I'm a chartered accountant by, by uh, my education background. And uh, throughout my life, I've been focused on academics, doing well in my life and achieving um, milestones in my career. And uh, while I was um, in my job and, uh, you know, my, my banking uh, career, my financial services career, I was enjoying it, but there was something that's always missing there. There was always like an um, a part of me that I felt that there's something more out there and you know in the process like I just went on working 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 so much because I just felt working hard working harder would lead me to more fulfillment and more happiness and achieving you know those milestones that I had uh, in my in my uh, goals but it's just you know it was like I had everything I had the job I had the finances but I didn't have happiness so I didn't know what went wrong, what went wrong with all the hard work that we were told, right? Like that right. work hard and you get what you want in life. And, you know, you, so, so I just like, um, it was the peak of my, my uh, professional career and it was also leading to a burnout. Mm -hmm. And at the same time I had a, in my personal life, I had some heartbreaks and both these things combined. I was starting to question who, what am I here to do? You know, what am I? Who am I? What am I here to do? And how can I bring up that confidence in myself? Where did I go wrong? Or did I even go wrong in believing that work hard is going to get me the happiness and fulfillment that everyone talks about? So I gave a hard look at myself in the mirror and I couldn't recognize myself. And you know, I was like, who is this? Where's my cheerful, <laughs> where's my cheerfulness? Where's the joy that I always had in life? Yeah. And that's where this exploration. Uh, started that you know I was exhausted or overwhelmed with just working 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 not knowing what I need what I want in life and just going uh, going on on a you know that okay I need to work I need to study I need to get a job I need to earn get promotion you know just in that cycle and and uh, and that was it like it was just a moment of overwhelm and exhaustion that led me to stand in front of the mirror ask myself what do I want who am I where am I going in my life and you know, where did I lose my spark? And um, that was the start of my my journey into into knowing more about life. What do I want? What are my needs? What, uh, you know, like pretty much coaching myself back into confidence and clarity on what I want in my uh, life. What is what is it that I need? What is for my own happiness and higher fulfillment, which is also for the higher good of all. And um, and and that's how like a lot of introspection happened there. And um, and it led me to believe that I really love to contribute. And mm -hmm. I realized that there are, I'm not alone in feeling that overwhelm or that exhaustion. Like there were so many others around me and I started to help them bit by bit, like, you know, either my cousins or my friends or other people around me in the workplace. And that led me to, and that gave me so much happiness and oh, really? fulfillment that, you know, it's, it's bringing about change and it's, and people are beginning to love their life. You know, it's bringing happiness back to them. And that's how I started. Okay. And then I got introduced into coaching. The, okay. There's something called coaching. And then I started exploring more that, okay, there is a field called life coaching. And this is a, like a pro formal profession that I can pursue along with doing my own corporate thing. And, and, you know, so it's about balance and that's what, it came up to is doing the coaching certifications learning different tools so i have my nlp practitioner certificate i have heal your life coaching certificate um i'm a reiki level one um certified as well because i i kind of like delved into spirituality along with mindset work and so it's like a combination of east meets west for me where you know where, where in like it helped me to get into life coaching and um 
and that's how this how the how the whole journey began <laughs> wow wow yeah that sounds like a really huge life-changing event for you a series of mm-hmm. events yeah so yeah. when you say you are um nlp so that's neuro-linguistic programming right mm-hmm. yes yeah. it is and you got a ton of certifications mm-hmm. yeah yeah well you know <laughs> Yeah, I did get a ton of certifications. I guess, again, it was my desire to be uh, the best in whatever I do. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, acquiring all those tools and, uh, and, and things that I, can, that I can use to help other people, which will help me in being a good coach and, you know, and a better coach. And, um, you know, somewhere I realized, though, interacting with people and being out there has been more experientially rewarding than Mm -hmm. you know just having these these certifications but definitely these tools have really helped nlp has helped reiki has helped a lot in Mm -hmm. soothing energies and um you know just being calm Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. out of all of your certifications i want to know what is the one thing you learned you know, in, in being certified in the different um, categories, what is the one thing you learned that was like the most valuable? Like, wow, this is, this is the one thing that I'm going to carry into my life and business. What's that one thing? It's definitely the power of thoughts. Okay. It's a power of the mind. Because mm-hmm. um, NLP, Heal Your Life, these have basically the common tenet is about changing your thinking and changing your life. You know, like change your yeah. thoughts and you change your life. Um, mm, yeah, is, Louis Hay, right? Louis Hay, yeah. Yeah. You know, and yeah. and uh, and even NLP is all about the psychological aspects of mindset, of how we can change our thinking, how we can break the patterns that we've built up over the years of our thought processes. Because, mm-hmm. you know, this is one thing that I am always carrying now, and I practice daily being mindful as well of my thoughts. So like if we are conditioned throughout our life as we are born and since, you know, up until the age of seven, like a subconscious is registering all the experiences in there. Mm-hmm. And that kind of helps, that kind of goes on to become the foundation of our adult life. Mm-hmm. So it's really mm-hmm. important that we become mindful of what we are thinking and asking ourselves questions that whether this is, this is really who I am. This is, is this really what I believe in or is this someone else's belief that I've adopted mm-hmm. be it my parents or my sister or someone else's mm-hmm. and so that's one thing that I really take into my business is that the mindset of what I'm bringing to my business or my coaching or whatever I'm doing in my life mm-hmm. what am I believing about it what are my beliefs about myself my capabilities my business my services or or my contributions, like anything like that. So mindset has been my basic, my main um, area. And, you know, the whole, um, like I said, it's, it's about breaking those patterns. Anytime a pattern reappears, you know, you, you, you'll be being mindful and catching it itself and then going back and reframing it and taking up a new thought in in turn of in place of it to to replace it. so that is really important. That is something that I've been carrying. Well, like to sum it, you know, I would just say self-awareness because okay. once we are self-aware of who we are, our thoughts and everything, mm-hmm. our mindset is going to really change based on that. Mm-hmm. Because once we are aware of what we are believing in, what we are doing, or what we are thinking, what whether we are aligned in what we are thinking, what we are feeling and what we are doing, you know, it's, it's really going to change our life we, or, or business, our relationships, finances, everything. Yeah. Yeah. But it's so easy to not be self-aware. It is very easy. Yeah. It's so it's easy. A, it's, <laughs> mm-hmm. It is. And it is a, it is a practice. It is a yeah. practice. It's a mind mindfulness practice as well that has, that requires to be developed over time. And, uh, you know, it's consciously living life consciously in awareness to question each thought that you have, Mm, you know, especially the negative ones. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, especially the negative ones. 
because it's so easy for our mind to think negative because we are conditioned that way like our survival instincts are to be staying safe and to you know be doubtful of everything yeah. so it's to break that pattern that it that it requires practice and it requires a lot of uh, mindfulness in that so that we become self aware and yes. there are a lot of practices for that right to increase our self awareness first is journaling so which is journaling, like when yeah. you're writing down yeah you can ask questions to yourself this is my thought this is what i'm thinking about my business yeah. this is how i'm feeling right now you know because then at yeah. the end of the day it's also a thought behind that feeling that yeah. triggers that feeling so whether uh, you're thinking in the past or whether you're thinking about the future so either way you'll know that okay you have to come back to the present so journaling really helps and anything creative also i feel like painting cooking or anything it just helps you to be in that moment and to be aware of what you're doing and being mindful of it doing meditation these, right yeah <laughs> doing these these fun things yeah talks. definitely mm-hmm. like this this definitely helps because even now as you ask me me questions you're making me think or what am i on <laughs> yeah yeah so it's definitely being in the moment you and 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 answering and um you know and meditation helps as well so meditation has helped a lot um to mm-hmm. to just i wouldn't say quiet the thoughts but to be aware of the thoughts that's where awareness comes from that okay this is what the thought is but yeah. do you want to attach yourself to that thought it's that is a choice that you have to make mm-hmm. and that's all the difference yeah yeah So a little bit of what happened today I was making breakfast and I mm-hmm. um I delivered I delivered it. I delivered a sandwich to my mm-hmm. my bre- breakfast sandwich to my husband in his office cuz he's working today. And mm-hmm. he just took it. He just took it and oh. say thank you. Right? And I'm just like no one appreciates me. That that's the thought. <laughs> no one appreciates yeah. me around here. I go downstairs I make pancakes for the kids and they didn't say thank you. And I'm like mm. no one appreciates me. You know this whole thing yeah. is like no one appreciate. I'm washing the dishes and I'm like, "Oh my god, all I'm doing right now is saying no one appreciates me." Yeah. Right? <laughs> and so I mm-hmm. I asked myself, what would it take for me to feel appreciated right now? What would yeah. it take? Yeah. So you and, broke the pattern. <laughs> and I broke it, but you know, yeah. I I literally was like I caught myself doing that. You know, what yeah. would you suggest? You know, if if you were like, "Hey Maria, stop with that." you do this instead what would you suggest me do aside from well a different thought process aside from a different thought process yeah like okay. how i said what would it take for me to feel appreciated you know what what yeah. would you what's another tip well i would just go and hug my hug the kids and the husband and feel that love <laughs> you know just give love Just so. give love. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's so true. Just give love. Just give yeah. just give them kisses. Yeah. Yeah, just you know, just express your love and it just makes because that takes away um you know That's uh, a good one. much yeah. of that yeah, much of that uh, judgments that we have because it's Yeah. It's the judgments about ourselves as well that create separation between us and the other person and this is what it did. That's so to true. break that you just have to bring it back to love and it's that's just true. you giving love also would you know have But yeah. really I feel uh, built that connection again yeah that's true yeah yeah coming back to love that's a good back to love coming back to love, coming yeah. back to love. wow that's because it's just a good point mm-hmm. yeah because it's just a a judgments and our own self talk negative self talk that creates these walls that we have around yeah. everyone and it's just kind of you know coming back to love like you say so it's yeah beautiful. coming back to love <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, cool, cool. I love that. Um so I want to know um you know when you had said you felt burnt out being a banker and accountant. Um mm-hmm. how how long did it take for you to realize you needed a change? It did take me a while. It took me um a couple of months actually or maybe almost a year to realize that something is wrong here in my life. You know, it mm-hmm. took me uh it took me days of being in bed and not wanting to get up uh you know not wanting to go to the job and i'm like i love my job i like the work that i do why am i feeling burdened yeah. or drained by it 
uh, you know that's not how support how it's supposed to make me feel mm-hmm. uh, it took me yeah definitely took me a couple of months uh, to mm-hmm. because it was a build up slowly i guess mm-hmm. uh, that i didn't realize it and i went pushing myself harder rather yeah. than kind of taking a step back and seeing what's wrong with me i felt you know if i kind of focus more be make my timetable or do this or do that it's going to work out mm-hmm. uh, but by the time like i guess it was 8 9 months or something that i'm like this is not this is something else you know so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's when i kind of paused um, everything and uh, and got back um, you know to understanding okay what's going on with me what is leading me to this exhaustion why am i feeling this way you know there was a complete disconnect from the body because you're so much into doing 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 and um you know just achieving and going for that next doing working hard that and not connecting with your own self and mm-hmm. rather so much on the outside focused on the outside that it doesn't really lead to that fulfillment and that uh, that need for contentment within you mm-hmm. and uh, because you're really looking outside to the job and everything to um to make you feel and me and fulfill that need of yours of fulfillment but it doesn't necessarily come from there always so so yeah it took me a couple of few months to realize that it was a burnout it was that i had been really way too much focused on getting the education getting those certifications getting my degree of chartered accountancy and you know being in the financial services the numbers game and everything uh, it took a took a toll whereas my soul was actually screaming at <laughs> something else mm-hmm. so yeah <laughs> wow yeah i mean that was your intuition saying hey it's time for us to do something different yeah okay. and i and i feel like it's always is like that that the burnout kind of builds up slowly over the years because we were working working non stop without taking our own care or not tuning in tuning within uh, that kind of like one day then you realize that okay you know uh, enough of it <laughs> yeah. you have to take stock of what has gone wrong and that's what has become my mission that i want to you know women to realize it beforehand that while living each day we are taking care of ourselves as well uh, so that's not to reach that point where enough is enough moment comes in right you know? right mm-hmm. so it was all it, it took you some self awareness and then was it acceptance that made the shift accepting it yes definitely so that was a big big point of it because mm-hmm. i couldn't accept the fact that i was someone who had burnout happening really or uh, was even like you know i wasn't diagnosed but i felt it was a depressive episode of my life mm. and uh, you know and i couldn't believe that it was happening to me because i have always been a happy person cheerful in my life and laughing constantly yeah you know and and, and i've never um really there's always been um you know a part of me that is always like happy about life just being alive and stuff like that so i didn't know why this is happening and <clears throat> so self awareness came in but then acceptance took some time because i was like no this can happen to me like <laughs> you know and and on the outset it seemed as if i took care of myself so you know again all this there's a self care i think also has two parts to it one is the vanity you know the outside appearance of our own self that we take care of and the other is really at nourishing our soul and nurturing ourselves mm-hmm. which really is the i feel the inherent self care because i did That's take good. part of my outside for sure i was yeah. at my best in my physique my you know i was working out i was looking great my hair was great <laughs> <laughs> everything was like you know i was getting compliments every day my dresses were all uh, aligned my shoes were all matching <laughs> <laughs> so you were a fashionista but it wasn't good enough <laughs> but it wasn't good enough it wasn't what, good enough wrong? yeah and so well some way i you know it, and even i noticed that interest started dwindling as my burnout started going up mm-hmm. you know i found it an a task to get ready and mm-hmm. i found it really draining to get ready and do all that stuff it wasn't really happiness right mm-hmm. so it wasn't making me happy and that's where i realized that okay that's not that's the acceptance that came in that okay i really don't you know i might be in my pjs all day but i'm really feeling happy about yeah. it so that's that's another kind of acceptance that came in 
uh, and just like you know realizing that okay i'm good at the outside but what is happening within me what is my soul mm. wanting right now okay i want to sleep an extra hour or maybe you know i don't want to talk to certain people i don't want to i want to i want to phone detox a social media detox you know mm-hmm. just keeping the phone away i personally haven't seen news or anything for for a long time for a couple of years now like nine the six, news years for me wow yeah. that's so it's like obviously right now it's too much in your face you can't avoid but I, and i do keep a track right now right. but initially that time when i was going through the burnout and stuff and everything it was like everything was just so everything was too much honestly to handle it seemed was it that yeah and uh you know but yeah i don't i i take care of all that that's why i don't indulge too much into news because it's again affecting your mind and yeah. it's somehow playing in your subconscious and without us knowing it mm-hmm. it makes its way in our own self talk and our own negative thinking yeah yeah so that's yeah you know and, mm-hmm. that's interesting that you say you know externally you were on point externally you're on mm-hmm. point but internally you just yeah. didn't it didn't align it didn't align and that's what, yeah, yeah that's what i was going to say i was just not in alignment yeah and uh, you know i was doing something i was thinking something but i was feeling a different way you know at the office i was like yeah they're pushing my way out but inside i was like just drained and all i wanted to do was curl in bed and just sleep <laughs> yeah you know like it was it was like that and um, and yeah so it's been uh, it's, it's it was more about alignment of so that you know bringing that congruency in what i'm thinking is what i'm feeling and what i'm doing um which is yeah the core i feel of of nurturing yourself from within then and yeah. also doing more of things you know i realize a lot of what we do or rather a lot of who we are in our adulthood is actually going back to our childhood <laughs> yeah finding out ways how we were happy how what what made us bring fun into our life mm-hmm. because some way adulting we've forgotten to bring that fun element and that um you know just that fun element into our life we've become really serious about our responsibilities right uh, but i feel we can have fun while 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 uh, fulfilling our responsibilities as well just making more fun and more light about things um, yeah yeah than being caught up uh, you know about everything being a certain way and stuff like that yeah like the childlike attitude towards things right yeah definitely like a childlike attitude and an open mind to everything yeah. happening around us you know um accepting that it's possible to happen to us and making uh, you know just that um just that openness open mindedness to learn to grow and to evolve as and know the fact that we will change as we grow in life as we as we go on with our life um you know and accepting that because that was a different that was a tough for me to accept that i'm changing as a person that i've changed as a person you know so mm-hmm. um yeah changing as a person as a new person as yeah, a higher you time. the higher the higher self yeah the yeah. higher version of me and the transformed version of me you know complete yeah. transformation of my beliefs my mindset um my my lifestyle as well yeah so what kind of advice would you give to people who are transforming their own lives and adopting new identities in a sense and relinquishing the mm-hmm. old you know yeah. them so to speak mm-hmm. what kind of yeah. advice would you give them firstly it's always the mindset as cliche as it may sound uh mindset is everything i mm-hmm. personally i was uh you know i i've had certain beliefs come up old beliefs come up which i didn't know that they were still lingering in the background mm-hmm. and uh, i've had to work through them in the last few weeks and i realized it was all mindset and the moment i realized that um you know and and it's a constant process of working on mindset it's not that you work today then it's it's not going to it's it's going to happen it's going to stay like that for months or years like it's pretty much going to the gym i feel mindset is like for the mind you know exercise for the mind um yeah. so when you stop going to the gym your weight starts adding up fat comes back to a, to the body 
So it's the same thing for the mind. I feel we need to keep working on our mindset if we really need to get to that next level version of ourselves. And we want to see ourselves, you know, living a more fulfilled and, um, and more happy lives. And it's, you know, so that's, that's one of the, definitely mindset is one of the, the first things that I would focus on that what is the area of life that I want to change or what is it about me that I want to change? And then what are my beliefs in that area or about myself? And then seeing whether those beliefs align to who I want to be in that next level version of myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second is, uh, I would say, managing our energies. Okay. Um, you know, more than I feel our time because, you know, time, I feel like yeah, we all have the same amount of it, but our energies are also really different for each one of us. And it's knowing what is your optimum um what is the optimum level of your energy and how are you using it? You know, we are some, we all have different times in the day where we are at our optimum level. So making use of those so that you can, you know, you're using your energy productively rather than, you know, doing things which are draining you or taking your energy away or leading to distractions. Uh, because I think that's really important to manage your energy. And again, energy is... Uh, you know it's it's mainly about focus where you're focusing on mm -hmm. because it's whether you're in the past or in the future you know if in the past your energy is going to be like really low and heavy and you know because it's it's something related to the past it's not it's not there and the future is something that will give you anxiousness anxiety or excitement but either way you're con you're disconnected to the present and right now is what you need to focus on and you need to put your energy into the present so that you know what is the next action that you have to take for the next step. So yeah. managing our energy is really important so that you can actually optimally use your time, mm -hmm. you know, because time management is definitely, yes, there it's, you know, creating buckets of your time. But if you're not in the right energy during, you know, using your time or doing the work that you have to do, it's not going to really bring the optimum results for you. Mm -hmm. So I feel managing energy is super important. Okay. The third thing is definitely having an open mind, I feel. And okay. that is to just being open to change, open Ooh, to transform. That's a big one. Yeah. Open to change. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In fact, willingness and openness to change, to transform yeah. you know, is important. Because uh, when we have that, then the acceptance of the transformation is, comes easily or else we kind of end up self-sabotaging or just coming in our own way, um, being scared of that change. But when we know that we are willing to change and we are ready to go to that next step, mm -hmm. then it becomes easier to accept and not have resistance to it. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, no, change is, I think one of the, probably one of the biggest things that yeah. anyone who's yeah. transforming, they hold on to like <laughs> themselves, they hold yeah. on. You know. Yeah, because and that's what's important. Like, you know, like I do a lot of like in my spiritual work, there's energy work that's that that's involved, and um, in that way, I energetically release the identity of my old self so that I can make space and invite the new uh, version of myself into it. Yeah, and that helps a lot because we are really, like you said, holding on so tightly to these identities, yeah. and especially like what people think of us. Mm -hmm. you know like our families our, our yeah. friends the opinions they have the way they see us but that does not necessarily define who we really are no. and that's and that's that willingness to be ready and like you know of knowing yourself and being open to know yourself uh, to change and to see that that's really important because and that's and that for me uh, you know journaling energy work has helped a lot to relinquish those identities and except what's coming in. So that's one thing that I would really, uh, you know, suggest everyone to work on that. What is the identity of their old self and, or rather what is the identity of the new self and what is holding them back? You know, right. who's the new uh, next level version of them? And yeah. then what is it that's not letting them move ahead? Why do they think they cannot be that next version, just Preet or next version, Maria? What is holding them back? Mm -hmm. and it does yeah. take it does take time it does take introspection in the sense 
to introspect about it but once you know what's holding you back mm-hmm. it's quick to you know reframe and let go of it and that's where the willingness openness helps that okay i know this is like the mindset is identifying awareness of this is what's holding me mm-hmm. and then you know putting that energy into the right right direction to reframe that and then the willingness and openness to step into that new identity mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. that creates a transformed version yeah yeah no that's huge um thank you so much so three self awareness or no mindset mm-hmm. mindset focus on energy energy and willingness open to change openness to change transparency and openness to change that's big thank you so much so we want to know more what is it that you do and where can um the audience here find you and work with you mhm for sure so i do one on one coaching sessions with my clients and i have a 3 month and a 6 month package coaching package that i offer where we go through an entire process of them moving from their confused self and exhausted selves into confidence and clarity uh and just you know bringing back that spark in their life and uh identifying what's important and what's what's their needs are and aligning uh, basically to their higher good in life and that's what my program is all about it's about the aligned you so that your you know the congruency between what you what you want what you feel what you think and do is is all aligned uh and i have a fb my facebook group which is the aligned women group um and i have that so we, everyone's free to join that group it's got a lot of freebies in there and as well as i can i host a weekly meditation session uh, in that and there are different forms of meditation that i conduct and um there's also a um, a training going on, on on confidence right now in there and um and yeah and i'm also on instagram um so I'll, i can definitely share my handle uh in there and um yeah for your and feel free to just direct message me on on facebook as well so yeah so we'll put all the links below in the description So the Facebook group, we have the Instagram and then your aligned you program that's super exciting 3 and a 6 month program um where you get to work mm-hmm. with coach Jazz one on one if you want. Um and then any final things you want to share, you know, a lot of the audience here are women, their moms or entrepreneurs. Any piece of advice going into the new year? Mm, for them? For sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I would say uh well, you know, new year is a lot synonymous with the resolutions, new year resolutions and stuff that we have. And uh, something that I want to share is like really don't put so much of pressure on yourself that you have to really align to the society needs of having, you know, new year resolutions and stuff and you know kind of like living up to a certain image. Uh do what is good for you. you know do what is what you love and uh, also uh you know i go by three month goals so i would like recommend that you know instead of having like a new year 12 month resolution or something like that go small like chunk it down into doable bits so that it doesn't overwhelm you so it doesn't exhaust you and it's at the same time it gives you a feeling of achievement at the end of that short term period and keep reassessing that you know three 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 months every quarter or something like that um so that's one of the things that i feel will help um because with families and with a lot of and especially now with the work life and you know our, our homes becoming our, our offices there's a lot of uh, a lot of integration like that has uh, its mixed uh, spaces and uh, overlapping duties that's happening uh, so it requires a lot of more i feel my, you know more more patience and more care uh, and more nurturing your own self rather than trying to keep up to an image for someone else that's uh, true so just be true to yourself you know be yeah. true to yourself of what you want what you need in that moment and mm-hmm. honor that you know sometimes it's just few minutes of closing your eyes and sitting at your desk or even in the washroom of your home if you have kids because you know <laughs> you never get a spare moment with kids um so yeah so just doing taking those little uh, moments of um, you know stillness or silence in your day so that you can just kind of like recollect and come back to your to your own center and feel grounded and um you know um just doing those uh, quick things so that you know being true to yourself just 
giving yourself what you need in that moment rather than trying to keep up to an image of what someone else will think or or what they are doing or um you know so yeah so just being true to yourself Thank you so much. That is going to be mm -hmm. um, probably very valuable for a lot of moms, especially for the ones that are drained and with virtual mm -hmm. learning and all of that. So thank you so much. Um, well, what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and conclude the show. Thank you. And you know what? I think we're going to talk. We're going to have you back on so we can talk about your self-confidence programming okay, that you sure. are doing in the Facebook group. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah, you so thanks. much for your time, Jazz. We're so excited to have you here and all of the valuable tips, guys. So amazing, so profound and really can help you with aligning with the new version and really the real you. Yeah, definitely. The aligned you and the real you. And thank you so much for having uh, me here and giving me this opportunity to speak and, and just sharing uh, what has helped me to overcome my exhaustion, confusion and coming into my own confident self. So thank you so much. It was a pleasure to share. Absolutely. Thank you.